En el centro de la pampa vive un pimiento Sol y viento pa' su vida, sol y viento Sol y viento pa' su vida, sol y viento Hello, I am Patrick Barnard. Welcome to the 104th edition of the Pimento Report. It is April 2nd, 2016. Uh, we're going to go to an unusual urban green space not very far from here. It's called the Falaise Saint-Jacques, the Saint-Jacques Escarpment. There we are going to meet Lisa Mintz of the organization Sauvons la Falaise, along with a group of young people from the YMCA of NDG who also belong to an organization called Sever or Siver. We're going to go along an urban road called uh, Saint-Jacques, and there we're going to find out what we're going to do today, which is to plant acorns. What, what is this? Uh, planting acorns off Saint-Jacques? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're here, you know, there's so many trees been cut down lately. Uh, we wanted to do something positive about it, so we've got the CVR program from the NDG YMCA coming. They're Good. a group of teenagers, and we're all going to plant acorns because John here has donated some Thank acorns. You. And and John, you brought the acorns. Yes, I did. Yeah. It's about, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 in them. Now, were you the person who thought about this, John? Did I, I you conceive the, this idea? I pitched the idea to uh, Lisa here and um, she said it was a great idea, so and then we organized it, I guess, and now here we are. Great. Okay, this is going to be fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> You've brought a lot of acorns. How many have you brought? At least 1,500. Probably 1,650 or so. Yeah. Wow. And where do they come from? They all yeah, come from uh, Mojoya. So we pick them up on the mountain, uh, we have a project over there. So it's either me when I'm patrolling, my colleagues when we're patrolling, or the kids that come. Uh, we have a school project called Semence, and then we teach them how to recognize the good ones from the bad ones that have like little bug bites. Uh, and then after that we actually um, uncap them. Uh, we make sure they're all clean, we put them in bags for the winter, we count them, that's how we winter them. After that in the spring we take them out, we put them in water uh, for I think it's like a few, few minutes, few uh, hours, and then we put them back in the bags and then they start to germinate. That's so that whole summer wintering process is what enables them to actually uh, be ready in the spring to come out. Yeah. Now we're going to plant, let's say, a hundred acorns here. Does that mean that there's going to be about 20 or 30 saplings on the uh, falaise? Well, it, it's hard to predict because conditions vary tremendously. So it depends really on the sun. You have a lot of lights. That's beautiful for them. Uh, then, you know, the wind, uh, whatever other competition they may have. Uh, if there's predation, if there's, you know, any disturbance. So it's really hard to say. But usually we, we aim when we do the planting, we aim to have a success rate about, of you know, 20%. So, do you think we should ask Mayor Coder in one year to come down to the Falaise and, and look at these uh, these new oaks? Do you think that's um, a good idea? You'll have to follow up and see how they do. Probably um, us when we do planting on the mountain uh, to see the full impact of our action takes several years usually, uh, and we usually try to layer different uh, strata of plants that we plant. So it takes a, a little while to really stabilize and to see the full before and after but uh, you can always follow up and see take pictures before take pictures after and see the densification Palais Saint -Jean, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. this is uh, on the top part here it's going to be probably sandy silty okay right. Uh, on the, and on the slopes itself, uh, you have lots of probably rocks and lots of soil being uh, uh, that has been previously uh, dumped. Mm -hmm. Okay, and on the bottom, you will have uh, mostly uh, clay and silt. Well, well, well! Look who's here. Rock it up. Okay, it hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Hi. Good. You're back on the falaise. Bienvenue, mes amis. Hello, hello. To plant, uh, to plant acorns? Yeah. Mais c'est formidable. Really? C'est la deuxième fois, n'est-ce pas? Mm -hmm. Just make a little hole. Maybe this deep. Give me a little bit deeper, maybe. And then we put the acorn in. So downwards, but sort of to the side. So you want a little pointy thing sort of to the side. And then you put it in. And you cover I, I get it up. slightly different directions. I think we get confusing now. 
and you go like that, and you say, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you do. It's not hard, and uh, yeah. So we, we've planted, a, we had like maybe a thousand uh, acorns. 2,500. 2,500 acorns. So yeah, we need your help. <laughs> so it's April 2nd and here you are planting acorns. Yes. <laughs> yes. What do you think of that? I think it's important. I'm uh, currently just taking all the worms aside so that it can help the, the plant grow. <laughs> Kali, why is it important to do this today, do you think, without being too serious? Um, I think that trees are a very important part of our livelihood. They contribute to our health, they contribute to, to almost everything we do there we breathe. So I think that it's important to keep planting um, every time trees are torn down. And you're planting this acorn on the falaise. Is that important too, do you think? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, if we can plant a tree for every tree they tear down, I think that would be an accomplishment. <laughs> Why are you here today, ladies? We're here to plant acorns. Plant acorns. And what do you hope those acorns will be? Oak trees, maybe? Yeah. Oak trees? Beautiful. So you're planting an acorn? I am. And, uh, and under the tutelage of Virginie, who's a, a biologist. Yeah. And, and understands the, uh, this stuff. This, uh, she was just uh, speaking to me about the importance of political leaders and others uh, realizing uh, what spaces like this give people. Yes. What do you think about it? You're a retired social worker. What do you think about green spaces and people's um, health? There's been there's been a lot of evidence-based um, science that talks about the critical importance of plants and trees in people's lives and how it affects their physical and mental well-being. And so, in view of this, it supports what we naturally feel in terms of how miraculous it all is, and it's critical that we support the propagation of these trees. What do you feel when you put an acorn in the ground, if I may ask? I think it's a small miracle. There's some, here's some proof that there's deer here in NDG on the fillets. And judging by how moist it is, like, it's pretty fresh within a day. Yeah. Within 24 hours. For sure. Now, why do you think would, would the deer uh, like this? Well, it's very abundant and dense here, so they get some cover from you know the city and there's some... Some, uh, they eat the sprouts that grow in the, in the spring from, I don't know, uh, some whatever trees that, uh, or whatever foliage comes and they think they eat the tops off of it because it's green and, and fresh. Now look at that landfill that's over there. Isn't that extraordinary? You just think, what are they doing? They're planning on putting a railway track there, but I've just been told by a geologist that the clay soil underneath uh, Will not be made any. Uh, yes, it will not be made any more suitable for building by dumping the, all this soil on it. No, it's not. Yeah, it's a wasted effort, and they'll figure out that it's, it's way too late. That it's a waste of time, and yeah. by that point, everything will already be ruined, and it'll take years before it becomes like this again. Planting trees. So here you are putting in an acorn. I am putting in many acorns. <laughs> okay, good. How many have you put in so far? Uh, I'm gonna guess probably about 20 and I'm trying to find places that it's not too low down because then they're just going to drown but you want to find places where um, there won't be too much drainage on it but uh, and they'll have enough space to grow. Are you going to come back and look uh, at your saplings in about oh. six months? Oh for sure. I didn't realize how to get into this trail but now I know how to get here. I'll come here. Did you hear the, the woodpecker? Yes. Great. Tap, tap, tap. Advice from a tree. Stand tall and proud. Sink your roots into the earth. Be content with your natural beauty. Go out on a limb. Drink plenty of water. Remember your roots. And enjoy the view. Yes! <laughs> there, I just heard the woodpecker. Woodpecker, yeah. Yeah, isn't that fun? Love that <laughs> I do. I um, love the wood now, when you're on the falaise here, you've been living in Montreal for more than 10 years now, but you're from Toronto. What do you think about the way Montreal 
manages its natural spaces. You know, I have to say, I don't think that they do a particularly good job. You look at Toronto, and Toronto has three very large park systems that are all connected. And what they did was there was a ravine system, and so they have a park along that ravine, and then they have Sunnybrook Park, and they have King Edward Park, and I don't even know all the other ones, but there is countless miles or kilometers of park that are all connected in some way, so you have these very, very vast green spaces. And in Montreal, we don't have the vast green spaces because they're torn apart by train tracks. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. You need to have almost like a green corridor, and I yeah. think that cities like Toronto have done a much better job at, the crea at creating green corridors. Now you know in the PMAD, which is the most recent and most comprehensive plan for Montreal, yeah. the city has committed itself to a green belt such as the one that Toronto has, such as the one that Vancouver has. Uh, do you think we're making any progress in that direction? I hope so. You know, you, I look at uh, Meadowbrook Park and I see what's happening there and I guess I, I sort of have always envisioned that being a great small Parc Agrignon. The students have come from YMCA Sever and uh, the geologist has been here and uh, all sorts of people have been here this morning. Uh, what do you think has been accomplished this morning with the planting? Well, I think we planted a lot of trees. I think people like people have told me that they feel like they're doing something positive and that they're making a difference for the future. And I, I really think that that's the point here. I mean, so many trees are being cut down. What we need to do is counteract this urban deforestation, and, and that's what we're trying to do here. Lisa, do you have a plan to take the same people or some of them back in six months to maybe see the saplings? Certainly. Yeah, we're gonna mark off the we're gonna mark them off, and uh, we'll come back and check and see how they grow, and we'll see what happened. But I mean, I, the, they were great seeds. There's lots of them. I think we're gonna get some action here. Uh, Virginie Michaud, uh, who explained all about these uh, acorns, uh, told me that she thinks it's very important to do this. And I said to her, "Do you think?" Politicians should come and see this. Is there a plan to have politicians come and participate here? Yes, um, we have, uh, well, I don't know if they're going to participate, but Mayor Dore from the Southwest is coming for a walk in June, and Mayor Copeman from NDG is coming for a walk in May, and um, <clears throat> this is great. Um, those are the two areas that border here, and they're going to get to see this area and see how important it is and, and make sure it's taken care of properly. <laughs> En el centro de la pampa vive un pimiento Sol y viento pa' su vida Sol y viento Sol y viento pa' su vida <laughs>